Good Tuesday morning, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. You know what? I am just going to close my door. I left the window open in the other room, and uh, the lawn is being mowed outside right now, and it's kind of loud out there. So I hope you all had a great Memorial Day weekend if you're um, over in the U.S., and if you're not, I hope you had a great weekend anyway. Um, we um, had a long weekend here and we went over to our neighbor's house and we had a little barbecue. So it was really nice to get out and see some people. Um, my husband and I haven't really seen a lot of people outside of uh, direct family for a while. Uh, just because, yeah, we don't want to do things still we're still kind of scared of uh, getting uh, the virus so um, we haven't been really out and about so it was just really nice to see some people out in the open air where we I guess felt a little safer and uh, it was a good weekend all right so today is Tuesday and today is the day when we take a card and we give it a makeover and we pick a card out of the uh, out of a current Stampin' Up! catalog and so I'm going to show you what today's card is. It's such a cute little card. That little elephant is really adorable. But if you know me well enough, you know I'm not going to use the elephant. I'm going to use a different um, stamp set. That elephant is cute and it is on my wish list for getting later on. So if we break down the sketch of this card, we get something that looks like this. Um, you can that rectangle in the middle can easily become a banner um, or you can keep it very simple as a rectangle and um, that middle um, circle is kind of a great a place to put your focal point um, of course you always um, can change things up a little bit and make them a little different so I'm gonna hide these and I'll talk to everyone at the end and I'm going to pop over to my other camera and so today this is my card traded the elephant for a little cat and I thought he was just so sweet and adorable so I'm going to show you how I made this card and um, I used the cheerful basket bundle and I really like this particular basket I created the basket just by stamping the image and cutting it out but you could also there are these two images here or two dies here and you can also create like a woven look with this basket so just keep in mind this basket um, has a lot more potential than just being a stamp and die cut around um, you can have a lot of fun with it and there's different images that fit on top. And we've got the apples, the hearts, we've got the crafting supplies. And um, I didn't, the greetings for this set didn't really match really well with the card. They were a little large or not appropriate. So I went back to the Celebrating You stamp set and I took lots of love out, which I thought works really well with the hearts. And then for the circle, I really like the stitched shapes. Um, this is the Stylish Shapes dies, and I like that it has stitching around the edge, so that's what I used for that. So just a couple of the key supplies that I used, just so you know what I'm doing. All right, well, let me pop these out of the way. And we're going to start off with, let's, um, let's do a little stamping. I'm going to grab, I need a little piece, a little piece of white that I didn't cut earlier, but I'm going to find a little piece. Okay, we'll take this and we'll take our tuxedo black ink and we're going to stamp this cat. We'll do some die cutting first. So I'm just stamping this in tuxedo black and I'm going to stamp the cat over here and then usually the easiest thing to do is to color before you die cut 
but since I need to get some die cutting out of the way first, let's do all the die cutting first. So I'm gonna grab my mini boss because everything will fit through here today. So cute, little tiny die cutting machine. Can't do everything on the mini boss because if you have a wider die, it won't fit through. But for a lot of the smaller dies, this is perfect. And just change up your sandwich a little bit if your machine is, is tight like mine is. I don't use the recommended number one platform. I just put that one aside and I grab the light gray number three platform. There's a darker gray one as well, but you want the light gray that's labeled number three. And we're going to take the num number two, that's a clear cutting plate. And we'll take the um, just a small square of cardstock. This one is about three and one eighths by three and one eighths. And that will just give me just enough room to add my circle on here. Okay. And we'll grab our second plate. I'm just gonna center that a little bit and we'll put that on there. And let me run this through. And there is my base circle that I need. And where's my little cat? Come here, slide this off over. I always like to work from left to right. And we'll grab our little cat. And I'm going to just center this around here. And when it looks centered, can just see a tiny little line around the entire image. I'm going to grab a little post. Oh, that's not post it tape. I'm going to grab some of this post it tape. I'm going to try and do this with one hand because my other hand is holding the cat in perfect placement. So here we go. All right. So now that's pinned down. I can show you this. This is just post it um, labeling and cover up tape. It just um, it's like a sticky, the sticky part of a post-it note. And this is just going to help me roll this through so it doesn't shift. All right. Let me grab a little kitty. So cute. All right. So there's my little cat. Make sure to remove the die so that I don't throw it away. Put it back and put this back. And I think that's all the die cutting we need to do for this card. So let's pop this over here and grab the Memento ink again. And we're going to start up at the top of the card. And this is from the a stamp from the Celebrating You stamp set. We're going to ink up lots of love in Memento Tuxedo Black. And I'm going to try and go pretty high up on the circle and stamp lots of love. And then I'm going to take the hearts, ink those up, and I will stamp them just below and I'm trying to get them so the bottom of the hearts matches up level with the bottom of lots of love. Oh you know what I am gonna have to die cut the basket too I forgot about that. Oh well we'll just have to go back in and do that but at least we can do the coloring first. Okay so we've got the cat and we've got the hearts and I need to post I created a new Stampin' Blends um, chart um, for my, my Stampin' Blends because I've got little labels for them and I'm not sure ah, here we go so I've these are the ones I created this month and they have all the new ink colors on there and I need to post these on my blog and get my new um, we have in um, blends in all the new ink colors and we just use like a little tiny punch. This is a 3 8 inch circle punch and you can use that to punch out 
those little tiny labels and then you put them at the end um, of your Stampin' Blend so that you can see what you're actually coloring with and you can see them when they're in their holder. Okay, so we'll start off with the little kitty and I'm gonna use the um, gray granite and I'll start off with the light color and I am really, I'm gonna be very boring with my coloring, I am just taking this and really I am going to just go over the entire cat with light gray granite. And then I'm gonna come in afterwards and add some dark granite highlights. Okay. So I'll just use my brush tip of the dark and I'm going to just go over top of everywhere where there's kind of these fur marks. I'm just going to go over those with the dark. Just highlighting. There we go. All right. And then I'm going to come in, this is the light polished pink, and I'm just going to do the little ears just a little bit up top there. And that is really all I did for the cat. I am a boring, boring, boring colorer, but I think it looks cute. I, I don't think I have to do too much more with that. I think that looks just great. So now I'm going to take two colors of blends to color the hearts. And I'll start off with the lightest color. And I'll just do like a few hearts at a time. This is the light polished pink. And I'll just hit a few of these hearts with the light. This, I mean, this could also be a Valentine's Day card because of the hearts. You could choose hearts in different colors, make them like less bright if you want to. Um, I don't know. I, I'm a sucker for like bright, uh, like over the top colored hearts, like pink and red. So that's what I chose, but choose something that makes you happy that's what the nice thing is about making your own is that you don't have to go with traditional colors if you don't want to you can go lighter you can go darker you can go different colors i'm trying to see if i did any more of those and then i'll do the light and the sweet sorbet so i'm trying to find other ones. The light and the sweet sorbet and the dark are very similar. Not as much um, variation between the two as in the polished pink, light and dark. I think certain colors are just when they're they're dark, they're dark. They're just, you know, it's hard to get the different lights and darks. Okay, I think I'm gonna save these last two and I'm gonna go with the dark on these bottom two hearts. Okay. All right, so we've finished all of the coloring for this and now we need to stamp this little basket. Let's do that. I've got a little piece of crumb cake here. I've got my soft suede ink pad and I'm going to just ink this up. Uh, did I grab a big enough piece? Oh, it's gonna be tight. I'm gonna see, I think. I think it's gonna be big enough. It was just, just big enough. All right. Yes, we'll be fine. And then we're gonna bring back mini boss because I forgot that this was also a die cut. Let's bring this back in. 
regular sandwich, light gray cutting plate. We're gonna grab the die and we still have a piece of that little tape. And I just need to make sure this is centered around here. I always just take a little moment to make sure that it's pretty centered. And we'll run this through. I am so happy with my mini boss now that I know that I can use my little gray bottom plate. I haven't had any issues with it since I switched to that. So if you have a mini boss and you're having trouble with it, just remember it's probably the number one plate is too tight and you just need to switch to the number three plate and you're going to be perfectly happy. This is a really great portable machine. Um, it's great if you want to take it with you because like it folds up into this, you know, nice little size. Like look at this is the size of my hand. Um, so it, it's it's a small machine and it's fairly lightweight. The platform is a lot thinner than on the, the big machine, right? These are the platforms. So you would um, take these separately, but it doesn't take up a lot of room. So I, I'm really, really enjoying mine now. And when I can, I wanna show it on camera because I didn't use it for about a year because the sandwich just, it was too tight for me. And I, I just, it, yeah, it just didn't work, but now all things are good. Okay, so now we have our little little uh, pieces that we need to glue together. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of Tombow right at the top of this because the bottom's gonna hang off a bit and we'll put a little glue on the bottom. So you just wanna get to the point where you're covering up the edge of those hearts so they don't look um, so they don't look bad, right? You want to just make sure it looks good. Now, the other thing you want to do is kind of make sure it looks level with the lots of love. Um, some people might not be bothered by that, but I, I am a little bit, so I like to have things a little straight. So, okay, so we've got that there. The little cat will come on afterwards. I'm going to attach that with dimensionals. Let's have a look at our other pieces that we need. So here is the balmy blue um, cardstock, and I cut this to 11 to four and a quarter, and then scored in half at the five and a half inch mark. And I'm just gonna grab this and just smooth it out with my bone folder. Okay, and then we're gonna come in here with my little banner piece, and. Uh, or my little piece. This is actually Tahitian Thai cardstock. So I could have used Balmy Blue um, or I could have used a Tahitian Thai card base, but I wanted the background piece to be a little lighter than the Tahitian Thai. So that's why I went with Balmy Blue instead. So I want to create a little banner at the bottom of this piece. This piece measures two and a half by five. And I'll just grab a pencil. And I'll show you what I'll do. Um, I like this ruler. This is an OmniGrip um, centering ruler. It's uh, 12 inches long. It's got centering and it's got a regular ruler. But what I love, um, these lines here allow me to line things up. So you can either measure, you can, if you want to, if you don't have one of these rulers, you can just measure over one and a quarter inches to find the center and then measure half an inch up. But what I'm gonna do is um, center it, see there's the zero, and make myself a pencil mark. And this, from here to here, it's half an inch. Um, I know what all, this is half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and an inch. So it's nice, um, now I can just move my edge right up to that line right there, and I know I'm at the half inch mark. So then what I'm gonna do is I'll just connect the corner to that pencil mark, and the corner to the pencil mark, and I, you know, I experimented a little bit with how um, steep I wanted the banner. This one seemed about ideal, about half an inch up. Three quarters of an inch was a little too steep for me, like it was too too deep, the center point, but um, the half inch mark 
worked really well. So then I'm just going to cut that into the banner shape. And, you know, we could use either side of this. Um, I've got florals. I wanted to see what the different patterns look like, right? So I, you could do like the floral pattern. Hey, I'll let you guys decide. We could do the floral pattern or we could do the stripes pattern. Let me know what you want, floral or stripes. This is stripes. I know what I want to do, but you guys are, you're going to have the final decision. There, there are the stripes. Um, okay, so I'm going to let you guys decide. And in the meantime, in case you decide stripes, I'm going to just erase that little pencil mark down at the bottom here. And I think I can attach the cat without attaching it to the banner. So that would be the stripes and this would be the florals. Okay, so I'll just flip over this cat and I'm just gonna use two dimensionals, one on the head and one on the body. And we will add the cat to our little basket here. Just, you want it just maybe a little bit above the edge of the basket. And just by adding it with dimensionals, it just makes it look um, like the cat is sitting out in the front, front and center. Okay. Oh, I had stripes. Oh, okay. I have two stripes and one, two, three, four florals. Okay. I wanted to do florals anyway. <laughs> so, um, but I would have... Everyone had chosen stripes, I would have gone with stripes, but I think the florals, after I saw them both, originally I thought I was going to use stripes, but when I saw the florals, I was like, oh, I kind of like the look of the florals. So we're going to go floral. The stripes would be cute too, but it would be a little bit more sedate. And after like the energy of the polka dots, I don't know, it just, yep, yep. Okay. So I'll put this down. And now see how the Stampin' Blends, they bleed through, but it doesn't matter if you're gonna glue them down. So I'll put a little glue on the basket and then we're going to just bring it down probably about half an inch. Half an inch is good. Okay. And then if you've already ordered $50 from me this month, then you're going to get these lovely heart pearls from me in June but today's the last day of May and let me see oh let's see okay here is my May host code so um, if you spend $50 with me this month using this host code right there that I have on the the page starting with an N24 you have one today is the last day um, to use it, spend $50, and then you're going to get a package of these fabulous heart pearls um, sent to you in June. And I just wanted to show you, I, I colored one down here at the bottom um, just to show you what it would look like. And I was debating whether to use colored pearls on here, but I actually thought they, they um, distracted too much, and I just wanted them to blend in a little bit. So I just added a few of the heart pearls to um to the to the project just without anything on them okay i have to turn it there there is a a definite up down when you see them on camera i think it doesn't really they don't really show up as well um, but when when you're in person you can see the little tiny hearts in there they're cool they're, they've kind of got this, um, some of them are kind of this, um, I don't know what it called. it's not clear, it's a little opaque, and then you've kind of got these ones that are really pearl-alike, pearl um, and they're just so cute. So there are the two little cards, one with flowers in the back, one with polka dots. And both of them are cute. And you know, the nice thing is if you're giving this to someone that actually has a cat, color the cat in the same color as their cat when you give it to them, right? 
Um, and if you don't want to do hearts, you can do the apples or the crap. Like maybe you're giving this to like a, a crafting person, like someone, not a crafting person, someone who's a hobbyist or loves to stamp. Um, then this little thing right here would be really cute with all the the stamping and crafting supplies that would be really cute and you can add the cat on there as well um so i just love this set it is just really adorable i think down the road i'm going to do something 3d with it um with the basket uh, piece but i just haven't gotten to that point yet but uh, i just wanted to show how cute 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 that was today all right, I'm coming back over to you guys to say hello. I already told you about my host code gift, but also if your order is at least $15, you'll get to choose one of my free with purchase tutorials. All the supplies I talked about today are over on my blog. They are also in the description of this video. Um, down below, there's clickable links that you can go to, as well as links on how to contact me um, and a whole bunch of other things so a look down there you might need to click on the see more um, uh, Facebook and, and YouTube don't always make it obvious that there could be a larger description the the see more or show more is often kind of small so um, just make sure you click on that if you want more information I always have lots of information I was a librarian in a past life and um, I I do love the details a lot. So I try and give you all the information I could think that you would possibly need down below in the description. Okay, let's have a look and see how you guys are today. Let me know if you have any questions before I um, finish, but let's say hello. Hello, Teresa and Deborah. <clears throat> excuse me, and Karen and Martha. Um, uh, Teresa says this is her favorite bundle from the catalog oh well that's awesome I caught my eye right away too um, good morning Janine and Janine says she loves that kitty and I knew you would love it Janine that is true good morning Betty Ah, and Betty likes the card and the cat um, and it's on her wish list good morning D. Alita said um, I don't have that ruler, so I cut out a piece of paper that wide and fold it in the middle. Well, that works really well as well. Yeah, you can, there are so many different ways to to measure things, but yeah, that's a great idea. Take a two and a half inch piece of computer paper, cut it to two and a half inches, fold it in half, and then you'll be able to find the exact mark. Even better if you cut it to two and a half by half an inch, fold it in half and then you can just line it up with the the bottom of the banner and cut it that's a really smart idea um cindy says she loves the ruler i i love a ruler too in fact i love all my rulers <laughs> if i ever go into a craft store you might find me in the drafting supplies section because i really love tools um it's funny that uh, that would mesmer mesmerize me. I always loved the drafting tools and I, I had no idea that that would be even an interest of mine. But I do like, I don't, I, I don't draw like in terms of art, but I do like to like do practical sketches. I like to make templates and stuff. So I do have a lot of different rulers and stuff. So that is one of the, my most used rulers right now. Okay, enough about rulers. I've lost half of you. <laughs> um, let's see. Nalita made a good point about the stripes um, being really good for a masculine card too. So yeah, I you could definitely flip the side and, and switch it to stripes to make it into a more masculine card. Um, Karen said, I've inspired her to use the set. Well, I'm very glad about that. Martha said, very cute. Janine said, darling card. Nalita said, where's the dog? I know there's no dog in this set. At least I don't see one. <laughs> we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to get a different, there are some sets with dogs in it. So 
Um, I am a really big dog lover, so it's not not because I don't love dogs. It's just that this set didn't come come with um, uh, a dog. But um, maybe in another video we'll do, do it one with a card. Um, Betty said, thank you for the su suggested sandwich with the mini boss. Mine has always been so tight too. Oh yeah, please, please try that new, the different sandwich. I, I wasn't, the month that we had the sale on the mini boss, I was not going to promote the mini boss because I did not have a good experience with it. I will not promote things that I don't like. And I, I was just, I am part of a, a leaders group um, and I posted like, how am I going to like talk, of, like avoid talking about the mini boss because it was on special and, and there were also dyes on special that month. So I thought I would focus on those dyes, but I didn't, I couldn't promote the mini boss. And one person wrote on that thread, she goes, have you tried this sandwich? And I'm like, no. And I flipped out my machine and I tried it right away. And I was like, wow, it works. And then I like kept trying it and trying it because I was like, okay, I want to try it with the, this type of dye, you know, and that type of dye. And I used it all that month and I was very happy with it. And then I've continued to use it on my videos and I am truly happy with it now. So I can recommend it. You just need to switch up the sandwich, which is a super easy fix. I mean, it's probably one of the easiest fix it doesn't involve any sort of weird stacking you maybe what you need to do though if you don't use it every day what I might suggest doing I don't know where I stuck my my little little pieces ah there they are okay so what I might do just like take a sharpie and like put an asterisk on here like take a, a red sharpie or a blue sharpie or something and just like put a star on here so you remember the next time you use it that you want to use this one and I'll say use me put on there or something something to remind yourself so that you don't have that same frustration in the future because the mini boss is a good machine um what I can say in defense of die cutting machines is they are not all the same. Some people have no problem with their mini boss. If your mini boss works with the number one plate, go for it. it it's it, it's whatever works for your machine. That's why they always say, don't um, um, don't ever force something through your machine um, because you might have made the sandwich incorrectly. So always stop, think, look, what are you building? How are you building the sandwich? So if something is too tight, then you need to rethink it. Sometimes we need to add a layer of cardstock that's called a shim and that helps make it a little um, thicker because sometimes um, it needs to be a little thicker. So it just depends on your machine. The machines aren't all calibrated the same way. So you just find what works for your machine and then um, just make yourself a note so you remember for next time. Uh, Cindy said, a Darvel card. Um, Cindy asked, did I possibly miss or I can buy that ruler? Um, how about I leave the link on uh, the ruler in the description of the video. I'll have to go um, grab it off of um, my Amazon and I'll, I'll put it down um, in the description of the video a little later. Um, so it might not appear on Facebook. Go, go to my YouTube video. I'll try and remember to edit it on Facebook because we're doing this on Facebook right now, but all my videos end up living on YouTube. So I tend to spend more time editing my descriptions over there just because it's um, it lives for longer over on YouTube. Um, just because it's, it's more easy to find. Facebook is a little bit more, it doesn't get searched out as much in terms of searches. So hopefully, um, well, I will definitely find it over there, Cindy. And, um, just if, if I don't remember, just send me a message and I will, I will definitely add that for you. All right. Well, Betty, I'm, uh, let me know on my, the next video. Let me know if you tried out your mini with a new sandwich and tell me if, if it made it better. Cause I want to hear, I, I, I want to hear if people are still having problems with theirs. Um, because if, if there are, um, we've got to find a, a way for you to use yours. 
All right, guys, I hope you have a great week. You will see me again um, this this Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern all over on YouTube. I will be doing my live. And if you remember last week, um, I was working on um, those uh, cute little Hershey's nugget boxes. Um, this week, I will be making more of those um, in different sizes. Um, I've got different words that need to be spelt out, different um, names. So I'll, I'll be working with um, creating different sizes for those nugget boxes. And um, those ones, um, they work really well with the Alphabest bundle because it's got, I don't have my stamp set, but this is the little punch. Work. There we go. You can see it. Um, that fits over top of a... Um, trying to get the reflection so it's neutral um, that works over top of a nugget really well so you you stamp the letter you punch it out with the punch and then you add it on top and so it makes it a really nice easy way to put an alphabet on top of patterned paper or whatever you want to do stamped paper whatever so um, I hope you will join me on Friday for that. And there will, of course, be a recording and the project sheet for that will come out on Saturday if you're on my email list. OK, have a great week and I will hopefully see you on Friday. Take care. Bye bye.